So I'd like to um, invite uh, Emmanuel Chakwazira from um, Plant and Food at Lincoln University to give his presentation on the Yarra in tester for chloroform meter calibration. So uh, thank you, um, Emmanuel. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Craig. Um, what I'm going to present here is, the, is work that we did a um, couple of years ago, 2018-2019, and it was um, funded by Balance Agri-Nutrients. Uh, the whole idea of doing the work <coughs> um, was to, uh, there's a feeling that we need to find better ways of predicting how much N we apply in season, and the N tester chlorophyll meter has been used uh, successfully in, um, in Europe to do just that. So um, we tested uh, the instrument, but we did the experiments as um, controlled experiments for the simple reason that um, the end test as one of the weaknesses is it also responds to stresses, uh, other stresses like water and uh, other nutrients. So we wanted to limit um, those other stresses and just concentrate on, on nitrogen. Um, we, at Planet Food, we always joke that if you are stressed with your work, maybe it's the statistics or, or, or anything. You can just go on Google and type either climate change or, or nitrate leaching, or and you get a lot of reports that um, people are reading about those issues. And some of them, they are a bit comical. It depends who, who writes them. And some, uh, they give just a bad view of, 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 of the industry. But I think it is our duty to um, do the right thing in the industry and um, make the general population understand um, some of these uh, topical issues. Um, and one of the topical issues is the use of nitrogen on, on farms. Um, the background into nitrogen itself <coughs> is, is the arm fertilizer guidelines that, that we, we use when determining how much to apply, and this applies across uh, the crops. Um, what, one of the key things is you work your fertilizer, your rate of application backwards. So you need to know how much you are going to produce or the potential for any crop that you are growing. Once you know the expected yield, then you can calculate how much fertilizer are you going to need uh, backwards? So for example, if, if you are growing wheat and you expect a yield of 16 tons, this is total yield, both straw and, and the grain, and the concentration of the nitrogen within that total yield is about 5%, it means your crop should take up about 240 kgs of nitrogen. So by knowing the, the total amount that your crop is going to take, you will be able to then go backwards and calculate how much fertilizer you actually need to apply. And how do we do that? Um, traditionally, we have used uh, soil testing. And because we are talking of nitrogen, the soil testing will give you a mineral end level. It can give you um, an available amount of nitrogen that's, that's that's going to come at the end of the season, the mineralizable end, whether it's available or it's, it's potential. And what it does as well, it, generally it gives you the season's estimate. So if you do your cell test and get, maybe at the end of the season, you will have a total of 100 kgs. For you to determine the amount of fertilizer that you are going to apply, you are going to say, what the crop is going to take up, which is 240 minus what the soil is potentially going to give you, which is 100. So in this case, you would have to apply about 140, 150 kgs of, of nitrogen. We know this, this test, the, the soil test, they are not perfect, but they are a better starting point than um, any other form of, of guesswork. But there are also other methods that have been used uh, to determine how much nitrogen we apply. Um, Sometimes people, we use chemical analysis of plant tissue. 
But if you are doing an in-season, you want to determine how much to apply in-season, um, it's, it's, it's not very useful because it's, it's not instant. You, you, you take your tissue analysis, tissues for analysis, send them to the lab. It may take a week or two. Uh, your crop is still suffering from stress, from stress and they are losing yield every day. <clears throat> so we need a method that kind of tells us what we need to apply today. Uh, the other way, it's visual assessment. There are others that will tell you that they have enough experience to just go into the paddock and tell you how much you need, you need to apply. That's all fine, but it's, 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 um, it's very subjective. It depends who is working in the paddock and determining how much to, to apply, and therefore, usually, it's not, it's not reliable. So what we need is to find a way to... to, to estimate how much we actually need at that point we get into the paddock to, to measure how much we need to, to apply. So the alternative that we, we have are the chlorophyll meters. I, I know traditionally <coughs> we have used uh, the SPED uh, 542 meter, and that has now been, um, the algorithm has been changed into an end test. It's basically the same equipment, but the algorithm has been changed uh, and it's being used in Europe successfully. So um, it's, it's one of the key thing about the two instruments is, is they all measure the chlorophyll concentration in the um, last fully expanded leaf. If, if your wheat is before flag leaf, it's the last fully expanded. If it's at flag leaf <coughs> and after, you measure the flag leaf. But the, the, there are some differences. One is just the... Um, output values. Um, sped meter, it's generally measured 0 to 80, whereas the end tester, it's 0 to 700. And the other key difference is the end tester actually gives you the amount of nitrogen that you have to apply. So it gives you a value in kgs per hectare. And it's, it's set at a top value of 90. I think basically if you are in a wheat crop, if you're applying more than 90, there's bound to be, to lose some of, of, the crops cannot take that 90 within a short period of time. So if you are irrigating or there's a big dump of rainfall, you lose, you lose a lot of um, that, that fertilizer. So it's end tester is currently, there's a lot of people that are actually using the end tester and, and, and for, for recommending fertilizers. So we, we really need to, to understand how to, to use it. So the basic things is you use the youngest fully expanded leaf because that the level of nitrogen in the fully expanded leaf represents what's coming from the soil. Um, and the way you measure, especially for the cereal crops that is long and thin leaves, is you, you measure at the midpoint because the level of nitrogen concentration decreases from the base to the, to the tip of the leaf. Otherwise, you have to measure um, several times along the length of, of, of the leaf. But on average, if you use just the mid, the only critical weakness when you are, uh, of the end test, if you are dealing with thin leaf crops, is ideally supposed to avoid the mid rib because it has a higher concentration of nitrogen than the outer um, lamina part, but because the leaves are thin, you have to uniformly include uh, the midrib. Um, so when you are doing the, the measurements, um, it gives you a figure between ideal, it's not ideal, it's between zero and 700. But you can't have figures of zero because if it's zero, it means there's no chlorophyll, it's a dead leaf, and you don't need to measure dead leaves. So um, in a normal crop where you have applied uh, starter and fertilizer, you are probably starting at figures of around 300 to, to, to 700. And those figures, as they increase to 700, it's less N that it tells you to, to apply. And conversely, the intensity of deficiency is, increases as you uh, go towards towards zero. How do we use the end tester? You it's set in such a way that you take 
30 clips, 30 measurements in a paddock, and it averages those 30 measurements, then it gives you a, a single figure of fertilizer that you're supposed to, you're supposed to apply. Um, the readings itself, like I mentioned, if you are doing it in a paddock, it's influenced by other stresses like water and other um, fertilizer elements like phosphorus and, um, and nitrogen. So um, if you are going in a paddock, it's, it's, you have to supply the other elements that are important for, for growth. Otherwise, if you measure a crop that's stressed in phosphorus, generally they've got small leaves and so they concentrate uh, chlorophyll in the, in the leaves and it will give you a false um, it will give you a false reading that gives you a false amount of N that you have to, to apply to, to that crop. So understanding the, the weaknesses um, means that you, you have to have a strict sampling protocol. So what we did uh, at um, Lincoln is we used to um, controlled experiments, one in the Biotron at uh, Lincoln University. We used six N levels um, and three genotypes um, with six reps. Everything else was controlled except for the, nitro for the nitrogen rate that we, we applied. Um, that's just a representation of uh, the crops potted experiments and uh, the range of nitrogen that we, we applied from one millimolar to, to 10. Um, the work that's been done on this range of nitrogen concentration is that it saturates at about between six and eight, depending on, um, on the crop that you are growing. Um, the other experiment we did in a glass house, we used different nitrogen at low rate of 85 kgs and uh, an optimum rate of 285 uh, kgs that was based on the um, wheat calculator. We used the same three genotypes that are currently on the market in, in New Zealand and uh, three reps. Um, so, and we grew these crops in um, eight uh, centimeter long tubes. Uh, that is a diameter of about uh, 15 centimeters. We wanted to mimic the depth of um, some of the paddocks that we use at, um, at Lincoln that um, anywhere between 80 to 100 uh, centimeters deep. Um, to do the measurements, what we were doing in this experiment was to measure the end test values on the leaf. After you click it, 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 it gives a mark around the leaf. Then we went in and cut that mark and measured the, <clears throat> the leaf area. Then we used, um, we extracted the chlorophyll from that portion using a DMF. <clears throat> and because we had calculated the area, we extracted the chlorophyll, we could, we calculated back to per, per unit leaf area so that <clears throat> it, um, it, we could relate it to um, the end test values. So the whole idea was to compare the chlorophyll content representing the nitrogen in the, in the leaf and the end test value. That's calculated from the algorithm meant to represent uh, the end and see the relationship. So the relationship that we got is, um, Basically, there were no genetic differences, which kind of, if, if it's replicated, it makes life easier because there is a lot of uh, wheat genotypes available on the market in, uh, in, in New Zealand. So you wouldn't want to develop an algorithm for each of the, of, of the genotypes, but um, the, both the total chlorophyll content and the end test of values, they did increase with um, uh, nitrogen level, and the relationship between the two, it, it was basically um, a straight line, which uh, is helpful in terms of um, understanding the relationship of the 
N in the chlorophyll and N being measured by, by the N tester. So that's, that's the growth chamber experiment. Uh, in the second experiment, where we grew them in the, in the glass house, uh, we basically got the same relationship. Um, they both increased with um, nitrogen, but there was um, a difference uh, in that um, discovery uh, produced more chlorophyll and uh, more larger values with, with the end tester than the other two cultivars, um, Duchess and Reliance. And, and we think the main reason for that is discovered uh, Duchess and Reliance, they, they've got similar parentages. So they are basically bred from uh, similar genetic material. The only difference is um, discovery is wider leaves than, um, than reliance. Um, so the relationship also between the chlorophyll and the end tester, um, the R squared value shows it's, it's, it's quite tight, so it makes sense to, to, to use the end tester for determining the amount of nitrogen you apply. So in terms of um, just take home messages, as far as uh, these controlled experiments are concerned, is um, uh, there's a close relationship between the two, the chlorophyll content and, and the end tester, um, which actually suggests that the end, test, end tester can be used um, to determine um, fertilizer application in cereals in these crops. Um, our results suggest that it saturates at about 680, which is within the range that's actually reported in, um, in literature of 650 to 700. Um, these were um, controlled experiments. Uh, what we need, what we would be good is to have a next step where we actually go in the paddock and um, repeat the same experiment and see the response of um, maybe in the, in the part of we need to have more N rates than uh, we had in the, in the glass house. But the bottom line in terms of N application is just to make sure the amount we apply and the timing takes account of all sources of N that's in the soil. And it, 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 it falls into, um, you need to understand and requirements for the plant at each different growth stage so that you'll be able to apply the right amount of um, nitrogen that's, that's required. Thank you. Uh, th uh, th thank you, Emmanuel. So um, we have time for some questions for Emmanuel. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Emmanuel, did you do any grain end testing at all, just to see how much utilisation you had? Sorry, uh, what? Grain end testing. Grain, no, no. Um, these crops, we, we, we didn't take them to um, maturity. Okay. Are there any further questions? Um, do you know... We, we didn't do that. Um, the under, to do that, we just need to do a whole range of N levels and fertilizer rates. Then we can understand that. But from where we're coming, we're saying um, we, when we are growing these crops, we always have a starter N that we apply at either it's, it's, it's if we believe what's in the soil is enough to grow the crop. That's fine. If, if it's not, then we, we add something. So um, there should always be optimum to give the optimum level of chlorophyll. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm wondering, can you get to the point where you have too much chlorophyll in 
not sure, but too much chlorophyll than you need. Uh, I think we need to test that and um, and uh, luxury end. But the, the, the results that we got from from the um, uh, from the bite on the growth chambers, it flattened after um, applying eight millimoles. So um, the chlorophyll level is just flattened after that. Very good. Um, oh, yeah, so, so sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sure everyone in the room can hear the questions, but evidently the video can't. So if we were recording, we need to use the microphone. Yeah, sorry to ask another question. You, you did the testing at growth stage 37 to 51, is that right? We did uh, 21, 32, and 37, 39. But the ideal time for, for if, if, if you are doing an application, if, if your reason for it is to bump the crude protein level in the seed, then you apply your end between 37 and 51. If, it, if it's to grow bulk like you for silage, then you have to apply your end from 21 to 31, 32, and sometimes before leaf, flat leaf. So the end test that was, it was developed in Europe to grow grain. For milling? Sorry? For milling? Yeah, yeah. So um, then the recommendation is you use it between growth 37 and 51. But most of the cereals we grow here, they are not for grain. We have to change when you need the fertilizer to bump up the crude protein for, especially if you're harvesting the whole crop for silage. No, I, I understand that. It's just that obviously a lot of the N is applied at the end of tillering and then at growth stage 32. So by 37, uh, most of that end won't go for yield. That's the reason I asked. Um, that's, that's good. Uh, so thank you very much for your presentation, Emmanuel. Thank you.